Good evening. It is 7.01 on Monday, December 13th, 2021, and I'd like to call this meeting of the Lansing City Council to order. Um, I would remind guests, participants, city council members, and city staff that masks are required um, in city chambers and in the building. Uh, and reminder also that face coverings must co should cover your, your mouth and nose to be effective. Uh, with that, I will ask the clerk to call the roll. Okay, Council Member Betts. Present. Council Member Dunbar. Here. Council Member Garza. Here. Council Member Hussein. Here. Council Member Jackson. Present. Council Member Spadafor. Present. Council Member Spitzley. Here. Council Member Wood. Here. There are eight members present, a quorum. Okay. Um, we are moving on to our meditation and Pledge of Allegiance, and I would ask uh, that folks in their reflection this evening keep the family of Dr. Richard Halleck uh, in, their, in their memories. Uh, he did pass away this weekend. Dr. Richard Halleck served as the superintendent of the Lansing School District from 1985 until 2000. He was born and raised here in Lansing. He attended Lansing schools and graduated from Eastern High School. He uh, also worked as a teacher in the district. He earned his PhD and master's degree from Michigan State University after earning his undergraduate degree from Western Michigan. Dr. Halleck also attended the Lansing Community College and was awarded the Distinguished Alumni Award. He was a mentor to me as a board member, a trusted source of counsel in my day job, working with school administrators across the state, and a friend and supporter. I ask that you please keep Dr. Halleck's family, his friends, and the entire learning community that will mourn his loss in your thoughts this evening, and ask if there are any other folks that we'd like to be in our memories. Mr. Vice President. Sure, I would ask that we remember Ariana Christina Dela Cruz. Uh, she's the uh, young teen that was murdered in Lansing this past Friday, um, as well as her family and her friends. Um, and if we can also keep the other three that were shot that day um, as part of that tragedy, uh, two teenagers and an infant, um, in, their, in our thoughts and prayers as well as their families. I want to also um, ask that folks uplift in thought and prayer uh, the young 12-year-old boy that was shot later that day. Um, I, I think we can all um, agree that this, this really makes no measure of sense. And so although we pray tonight, um, I hope that we all continue to act with purpose today, tomorrow, and beyond um, to get this, this really this epidemic of sorts uh, under control. Um, I think the ages of the most recent victims is, is just incredibly alarming. So again, we can keep the uh, victims and their families of the recent gun violence in our thoughts and prayers. I'd appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Council Member Garza. I was going to say the same thing about De La Cruz, so thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, Mr. Mayor, or Mr. Clerk. All right, thank you. Please join me in a moment of meditation and then the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay, we do not have proceedings for approval tonight, so we are to the consideration of late items. Mr. Vice President. Sure, we only have um, one late item, uh, and that pertains to, I apologize, it pertains to uh, a resolution where we are requesting representatives of Sparrow Hospital meet with representatives of neighborhood associations within the next uh, 60 days. So I would ask for um, the suspension of council rules to allow for that late item. Motion is to suspend council rule this evening. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, please say nay. Motion carries unanimously. Okay, we are to special ceremonies. We have recognition of the 2021 Citizens Academy graduates. Sure, and I would ask anyone in the audience who is a 2021 Citizen Academy graduate to please join me in the well, um, and we will provide you with certificates and recognition for participating in the Citizens Academy. Mr. Mayor, do you want to speak to the Citizens Academy while we have them here? Wherever you are. As the Citizens Academy comes down and joins us, um, I would like to, to thank everybody. Um, this is our third class. Uh, I believe our third, thank you, Robin. Our third class. Um, is it our fourth class? Fourth class. Is it our, okay, it's our fourth class. Um, but as they'll, they'll all tell you, it's always an incredible experience um, seeing the city from kind of the inside out. Um, but my understanding is this class has been exceptional. I've had uh, several people 
including this morning, tell us that they didn't want us to let you all graduate because you've been so great that they want to keep you around for a long time. But, uh, but thank you to all the participants. We expect you to go out and talk about the incredible work that goes on here in the city of Lansing. And uh, thank you, Mr. President, for the opportunity to thank all these wonderful graduates and to thank Delisa Fontaine and to thank Robin and to thank uh, Augie and, and uh, the whole neighborhood staff. They've done a, a terrific job with this program. Okay, we are to comments by council members and the city clerk. Any council members wishing to make comments this evening? Mr. Vice President. Before they leave, I, I first want to say thank you to um, Delisa Fontaine, Robert Anderson uh, King, as well as Augustine Martinez. I get, we get rave reviews um, about this program, truly. As a matter of fact, I was just talking to Stephen. Stephen, how's it going? I was talking to Stephen this past Wednesday, um, and he just went on and on about this program. And, 
um, and the, the understanding he's walking away with in terms of city operations, in terms of governance, in terms of how to be, I think, a more fierce advocate for his community. Uh, and so we just, we really appreciate that what you guys are doing. Keep doing it, double down on, on the investment uh, because we are hearing loud and, and clear. Sean, uh, as a matter of fact, also I talked to um, about the value of this program. So we appreciate you guys. Um, the second piece is I wanted to um, thank everybody that supported SWAG's fourth annual spaghetti dinner uh, fundraiser. And SWAG obviously stands for the Southwest Action Group. I talk about it all the time. Uh, we had a fundraiser this past Wednesday. Uh, this is SWAG's primary uh, fundraiser, their annual fundraiser. Um, and it would not have been possible without a number of people and entities. Uh, so I want to say thank you ta to Tabernacle David of Church, uh, situated on West Holmes. They, were, they actually served as host um, to the spaghetti dinner. I want to thank uh, the SWAG board of directors, uh, as well as the membership. I think in particular, Rachel, Wright, Rachel White as president, uh, and David Weiner and Jason Wilkes, who just work incredibly hard uh, to make sure the operations of um, the Southwest Action Group continue. I want to thank the Kia Quinney Davis. I want to thank Augie Martinez, um, as well as Bel Betty Wilkes, who is Jason Wilkes' mother, uh, who are on hand to serve. They did an incredible job, and we certainly appreciate them. And I want to thank you know, some of our community representatives that were on hand and really worked hard to support as well. Uh, Brad Funkhauser, Luciana Solis, Guillermo Lopez, Kelvin Jones, Terrell Christian, who I think was in the audience. I think he just left. Um, Nancy Malo from the east side, Rena w uh, Risper from uh, the northwest side. And that's, that's the beauty of what's happening right now, I think, in southwest Lansing is um, people uh, from really across the city and the region um, are, are, have noticed, I think, that this particular area needs some support in terms of being propped up. And they have rolled up their sleeves and they've, and they've worked to support. So we really appreciate that. And I really want to thank Councilwoman Wood. Um, she has just been um, tremendously generous uh, in supporting the operations of SWAG. Uh, and she does it quietly, um, but I wanted to make sure we made it, made it public. Um, yeah, and then, the, and then uh, pertaining to SWAG, um, there is a, going to be a fun event this Friday. Uh, it's the annual Lighting in the Square. We've worked really, really hard uh, to secure a town square in southwest Lansing. This is at 3434 Pleasant Grove, just southwest uh, of Pleasant Grove and Holmes. Um, and we are actually going to um, have some, some cocoa, some cookies. Uh, we're going to sing some carols. I've heard the, the big guy in red might make an appearance. Uh, yeah, and, uh, and we're going to light. We're going to have some Christmas trees um, at the town square. Uh, and we've lit up uh, trees and poles and everything you could possibly light up, we've lit up. And so we're going to actually light that stuff up on Friday. Uh, and we hope you come. That is at 6 p.m. Again, 3434 Pleasant Grove, which is just southwest of Holmes in Pleasant Grove. Thank you. Did I hear you right? The chair of the Eaton County Board of Commissioners will be there? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Council Member Spitzley. Thank you, Mr. President. I, I always um, am amazed when uh, Council Member Hussein says the announcements and he thanks everybody else instead of thanking himself, right? Um, he has been a staunch supporter um, on, in my third ward, in my neighborhood, in my hood where I live, um, uh, staunch supporter of swag. Um, when the square was built, um, you would see him and his family out there cleaning, grooming. So, you know, he's always thanking other people. And so I would take this opportunity to thank you as well. And thank you for your leadership in my ward in the South Side. You're the, you're, you're the fiercest advocate for the South Side and um, we are better for it. Um, Today, I'd also want to mention, and I apologize, I'm still fighting this cold, and sometimes I'm winning, and sometimes the cold is winning, but we, we, we marshal on. Um, this morning, um, there was a press conference about um, the, the gun violence, and, and I think for me, um, I would be remiss if I didn't mention it. Um, and and um, I'll let the mayor go into the details because it was your press conference. But one of the things I wanted to say that I took away from it um, was that we all have a role to play, right? And we all are responsible. And I think that um, as we are always pointing figures that you're responsible, you're responsible, we need to also take personal responsibility. And Sarah Anthony um, said it said it best, which struck home to me, and I asked her if I could repeat it today. And you know, that we, we, we also need to you know, step up and say we're responsible and we're part of the solution as well. Um, you know, I, and I was mentioning today, I'm the proud owner of two firearms. My firearms are locked all the time. 
I have a 12 year old grandson and I have a 15 month old grandson and now I have a new granddaughter. It is my responsibility to secure my firearms for my children, my grandchildren. It is my responsibility to know where my 12 year old is, my 12 year old grandchild is. Um, and so everybody can do something, you know, and maybe that's a small part of the puzzle, but it is an important part of the puzzle. And then when everybody's thinking about things of what can we do as an ordinary citizen, you know, lawmakers, we are lawmakers. We have a huge responsibility. We are, law enforcement has a huge responsibility. But as an ordinary citizen, the one thing I would ask for you to do is to secure your weapons. Please make sure your weapons are secure. Make sure your weapons are locked. Make sure they are not accessible. Um, you know, it, temptation is a, is a mess. And so if you, if you remove that temptation, that's your part that you are playing and that you are, you are doing to address um, this horrible, horrible wave of violence. You know, as, as we're looking at advanced peace in the county and we're looking at doing stuff in the city and as city council is looking what they can do legislatively in the state, in the federal government, and, you know, as, as ordinary citizens, that's a small thing we can do is to secure your firearm, lock it up. You know, if you don't have a trigger lock, lock your gun away in a, in a, in a box and make sure the keys are not accessible to, to young people. Thank you. Thank you, council members Pitsy. Other council members? Mr. Clerk. No <coughs> announcements, so we are to uh, community event announcements. If anyone in the room here in the audience has uh, an event that they would like to announce, we'll give you up to one, one minute to give us the details. And seeing no one stepping forward, we'll move on. Uh, we are to speaker registration for public comment on legislative matters. Legislative matters does include items uh, four uh, through um, 29 on the, uh, actually, I'm sorry, four through 31 on the uh, agenda, and it also includes the late item related to uh, Sparrow Hospital and the Eastside Neighborhood Organization, uh, or Eastside Neighbors, and uh, that is the blue sheet. I know some people may have signed up on the yellow sheet and put a topic down that fits under those categories. I will call you forward during the earlier time. Um, and then also we do have a show cause hearing. So if the owners of 2206 West Jolly Road are here, uh, there is a green sheet for show cause hearings that should be filled out. And we'll be uh, accepting those for about the next two minutes. You can stop up and see Ross in the back. And by the way, uh, thank you, Ross. He's been our intern for these past uh, several weeks, and uh, tonight is uh, his last meeting with us for City Council, so thank you for your service to us, Ross. And uh, while people are finalizing signing up, uh, we are to the mayor's comments. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, so I, I will piggyback on what Councilwoman Spitzley said. We had, a, um, I thought, a very powerful press conference this morning, um, bringing together many of the, the regional leaders um, in Lansing and, and around Lansing, uh, myself, Chief Sosby, Representative Sari Anthony, Lansing Township Supervisor DeAndre Hayes, Lansing School Superintendent Ben Schuldiner, uh, Sheriff Scott Rigglesworth, Pastor Damon Milton, uh, and Pastor Brown jumped in at the end. Uh, and did a little bit of speaking. Um, I want to thank Councilwoman Spitzley, Councilman Betts, uh, and uh, Councilman-elect Brown for attending. I know it was 9 a.m., so not everyone can be there, um, so that's certainly understandable. But um, I thought the conversation and the, the, the solutions, the ideas and the thoughts that were put on the table were, were incredible. Um, and it, it really shows our community coming together to talk about everything from law enforcement to regional work, to, to parents, to clergy, to citizens um, uh, weighing in. Um, I mean, certainly guns came up often, illegal guns came up often. Um, I did indicate that uh, I have tremendous concern about too many illegal guns and that when people lose or have guns stolen, um, those guns are being used in crimes. Um, so I'm going to be asking legal to work on an ordinance that we can send to you to review on um, 
requiring people to report when a gun is stolen or lost. Um, so we'll have that to you early next year uh, for your consideration. And uh, I think that um, you know, there's only so much we can do with guns due to the state legislature's preemptions. Uh, we did mention the, the red flag laws that the, the state legislature is looking at, which are laws that would not allow folks with mental health or other, other issues previous to have a gun. Um, and I think that's important to be considered at the state level. So I thought it was a great discussion. Um, and I do appreciate the, the conversations. Um, outside of that, I'm happy to, to report that the department, the State Department of Natural Resources approved funding that, uh, that we all, myself, sent to you and you all approved for several projects in Francis Park, Adato Park, Fenner, and the Corporate Research Park. Um, so those will, will be funded. So that's good news for us for uh, helping out our parks and recreation. I wanna congratulate our finance team here in the city of Lansing. They received the, the uh, GFOA Award of Financial Reporting Achievement, which apparently is the highest level of achievement in government financial reporting. So congratulations to them. Uh, tomorrow, as you saw, we had our Citizens Academy. They'll have their Citizens Academy graduation, uh, which will be a lot of fun. Tomorrow, uh, the Lansing Police Department and the Lansing Fire Department will be rescuing Santa off the roof of the Ops Center on the south side. Um, there's also going to be a food and toy giveaway. It's at 3 p.m. So if you want to see them actively engaged in rescue operations, they're going to be rescuing Santa, which I saw on my calendar, chuckled like Councilwoman Wood, and thought that would be a lot of fun to see. Um, so that will be tomorrow. Um, on December 15th, on Wednesday, we're doing our, uh, our, res our, our ARPA meeting, our American Rescue Plan funds meeting to hear uh, proposals from the community and to hear some of the priorities from the community before we prepare that to send to council as part of our budget. Um, so you all are certainly invited. Uh, Councilman Hussein mentioned the swag holiday in the square, which, which I'm looking forward to at 6 p.m. on the 17th. Uh, and then Saturday the 18th, we have our next mobile food distribution, which will be at Lansing Catholic Central uh, from 9 to 11, or usually until the, the food is gone. But uh, we continue those as there's certainly still people in need in our community. So uh, I appreciate the time, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, we are to public, or, I'm sorry, we are to show cause hearings. We have a show cause hearing in consideration of orders to make safe or demolish to the owners of property at 2206 West Jolly Road. Council Member Garza. Thank you, Council President. So we have before us in consideration of orders to make safe or demolish owners of property located 2206 West Jolly Road. Uh, the date of the hearing was September 23rd, 2021. Notice of the hearing was properly served uh, to the owners. The building structure has remained unoccupied for 180 consecutive days or more and is not listed for sale, lease, or rent. The building structure has been substantially destroyed by fire. The state equalized value of the building is 51,600 and the cost of repairs the building is $107,163.95. With that, uh, and we have no one who showed up to speak on behalf of the property, so we will move on to the referral of the show cause hearing. Uh, public safety. And we are now to public comment on legislative matters, and as I indicated, legislative matters includes items four through 31 on the agenda, as well as the late item last meeting of the year where you can tell we have a lot of action items. Um, and uh, item number four is a public hearing in consideration of the readoption of the codified ordinances. Mr. Vice President. Sure, just very quickly, uh, the charter does require that we recodify our laws every 10 years. Since 2018, what we have done is make, we've made it practice essentially to do that on an annual basis just to ensure that there's no lapse within the ordinance. Um, and so what we are doing tonight is we're having a public hearing and then uh, we will uh, approve for final consideration or I should say um, we will consider uh, final approval on January 10th. Yes, yeah. January 10th. All right. Okay, for public comment, our first speaker is Jenny Geis followed by uh, Sky and Yin.
Street. Um, I just want to say thank you um, so much for working with us on these Sparrow um, issues. Uh, you know, of noise pollution and, and blight and taking up this last minute resolution, it does really mean a lot to our neighbor, you know, to our neighborhood, our neighborhood association and, you know, all the joining neighbors. Um, you know, we've had several um, meetings with Sparrow in the past um, and, you know, we've had some, lots of good conversations um, and we're hoping that with this resolution, you know, um, and council's oversight that hopefully, you know, Sparrow will come forward with some concrete plans um, to mitigate the noise and the blight of the residential homes that they own and are decaying. Um, I also just want to um, give a shout out to um, Mayor Shore and to Brian McGrain because in 2019, <clears throat> um, they uh, Sparrow demolished uh, a home, a second home, um, and. I went in the morning to, you know, work out and by the, the next hour when I came home, the, the house was gone and there was no notification, you know, nothing that was sent to um, our neighborhood and reached out to uh, mayor and him and Brian McGrain had, you know, reached out to Sparrow and we had lots of conversations and there hasn't been a, ho a home demolished since. So those are our standards we're working with. Um, so, you know, and... <clears throat> So again, you know, we're going to, you know, I just want to thank you in advance um, because we have filed a, um, uh, a noise violation and I know that's in the works. Um, so, you know, thank you for, you know, helping us navigate city, you know, government and we may just apply for the Citizens Academy to get a better idea of how all this works. So thank you. All right. Thank you. And I know some of these people might have only intended to speak at Committee of the Whole. So if you don't want to speak, you're not required to, but we filled out a form, so I'm going to call on you. So Sky and Yin and David Muley. Okay, Dave Muley. I don't think he's here anymore. Uh, Margaret Tassaro. And Michelle Seltzer. Okay, then we are to the referral of the public hearing. Um, that is going to go back to Committee of the Whole. All right, and then we are to the consent agenda. Yes, um, I have one item to pull from that. It is item 16. That needs to be considered after item 26 to avoid a signing issue. And then Councilmember Wood has something. Um, Mr. President, I would appreciate that we pull item 14. I wish to talk on that item. Very good. Thank you. So uh, items 14 and 16 have been pulled from the consent agenda. Any other items? Seeing none, Mr. Vice President, a motion on the uh, amended consent agenda? Sure. I would move the uh, consent agenda, uh, let's see, number five, objecting to the transfer of all unsold tax reverted properties from the Ingham County Treasurer to the City of Lansing. Uh, there's another, another resolution objecting to the transfer of all unsold tax reverted properties from the Eaton County Treasurer to the City of Lansing. We have a cell tower land lease contract renewal, or I should say renewals grant acceptance uh, for the Financial Empowerment Fund, grant acceptance for Recycling Quality Improvement Grant for the Public Service Department. Uh, we have another grant acceptance as pertains to the Department of Natural Resources Community Forestry Grant for the Public Service Department. Act 7, 2021, uh, vacation of school, Craft Drive and part of North Washington Avenue. Uh, we have a resolution to set a public hearing in consideration of Obsolete Property Rehabilitation Act um, or uh, OPRA District for 1102 South Washington Avenue. Uh, and this is on behalf of Rio Ventures LLC. We have the setting of another public hearing in consideration of uh, an Oprah district or an obsolete property rehabilitation act district for 224 South Washington Square. And this was filed by 1247, let's see, 1247 Center Street LLC. And we have, sorry, another resolution that pertains to a street name change, renaming Technology Boulevard to Discovery Drive and biotech, biotechnology uh, drive to health, health park drive. And the last resolution we have on the consent agenda uh, deals with um, the redevelopment area liquor license for Batter Up Bistro at 621 East Michigan Avenue. With that said, I move the consent agenda. Mr. Proper motion, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, motion carries. Okay, we are two resolutions for action. We have item 18, the amendment to the uh, Lansing Delta Township Act 425 agreement. Mr. Vice President. Sure, so actually the, the first three items uh, under resolutions for action all pertain to 
uh, GM's an announcement uh, that they plan to spend two and a half billion dollars to build uh, a third electric battery plant. This investment, uh, as was discussed earlier as part of our Committee of the Whole, comes with hundreds of temporary construction jobs, eventually 1,700 uh, permanent jobs. I think it starts at 750 and over the course of five years increases to 1,700 jobs. Um, as it stands, uh, GM is looking to partner with LG Electronics uh, to build the plant. Um, and well, we're hoping they build the plant um, with LG uh, Electronics near the assembly plant in Delta, Delta Township. Um, there is a um, parcel of land there that uh, consists of 590 acres of vacant land. Uh, state's been working on a package of bills uh, to lure the investment to Michigan, the Board of Water and Light. We had uh, Mr. Kelvin Jones and, and Dick Peffley here uh, earlier with us as part of our committee of the whole meeting. Um, they've been working really on their end to ensure some of the most competitive rates um, in the nation in order to try to uh, lure this investment. Uh, and there are obviously a number of things that we're being asked to consider uh, tonight to secure this investment. The first item on our agenda um, is a resolution that deals with an existing 425 agreement, uh, which is um, a conditional land transfer, essentially. Uh, and it has been in place between Lansing and Delta Township uh, dating back to 2000. And it was originally put in place to, uh, to attract the Delta assembly plant. Um, in any event, this agreement, as I understand it, is set to expire in 2024. So what this uh, amendment would do, and this is the second amendment, we had an amendment back in 2002 and it dealt with uh, borders or boundaries. Uh, but in any event, what this would do is extend that agreement um, out by 25 years. And then there's some conveyance of taxes to Delta Township. So 50% of all real and personal tax, uh, property tax collected from the property within the 425 would be conveyed to Delta. 50% uh, of Lansing's industrial facilities tax revenue collected on all property within the transferred area would be conveyed to Delta. 50% uh, of the infrastructure improvement and service payment, income tax uh, from earnings within the 425 at a percentage of 5% the first year. And then what would happen over the course of 10 years is that would increase by 5% each year. Uh, and then in year 10, it would be at 50% uh, in terms of conveyance to, the, to Delta Township. We would receive administration fees um, on our end for actually administering that and, and conveying that to Delta. Um, with that being said, so that we can open it up for discussion, I would move the resolution. That is a proper motion. Um, absent the discussion from Kyle, is there any further discussion this evening? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, please say nay. Motion carries. Mr. Vice President. Sure. So the uh, second resolution uh, essentially would approve submission uh, of an application of the Mich Michigan Strategic Fund, um, and it would serve also from this body as a positive recommendation of approval for a requested renaissance zone uh, for a period of 18 years. Um, a renaissance zone is an area of land, it's, it's authorized via state statute, and essentially what it does is it, it designates a certain area of land um, that, um, that qualifies for certain tax, in terms of development, that uh, qualifies for certain tax considerations. It really is um, another tool that we have in the toolbox uh, to try to lure economic development uh, and related investment in jobs. Um, so again, had a, a pretty robust conversation in Committee of the Whole, uh, and I would move the resolution. That is a proper uh, motion. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, please say nay. Motion carries. Mr. Vice President. Sure, and so the last resolution that we have pertaining to the investment um, deals with an industrial facilities exemption certificate. Uh, again, these are allowed per, uh, or I should say by per state statute. We, um, we actually have a district in place. So the district is in place. Now what we have to do um, is approve um, a certificate uh, which would allow an abatement on real and pro uh, personal property taxes for up to 12 years. Um, what we are looking to do is set the public hearing for Monday, December 20th at 4.30 p.m. And so with that said, I'd move the resolution. That is a proper motion. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, please say nay. Motion carries. Mr. Vice President. Sure. Um, so 21 and 22 um, it was described as earlier as essentially participation and uh, allocation resolutions um, with regard to um, settlement proceeds in, in the national opiates litigation. I'm going to I'm going to turn this over if I can uh, to Mr. Smirka just because I don't want to to misstate anything. Uh, so if you could just speak kind of comprehensively to these and then what I'll do is move them respectively. Thank you. So basically, a lot of cities and uh, municipalities throughout the country have experienced extraordinary costs 
for police, fire, emergency services dealing with um, the opioid crisis. And we were asked to join a class action lawsuit with a number of other municipalities and states. And we did agree and we got in early, which is going to have a benefit hopefully uh, in, a, in a future settlement. Well, there's a settlement being proposed uh, with four companies, uh, Janssen Pharmaceuticals, Amerisource Bergen, Cardinal Health, and McKesson. There are other potential defendants in other lawsuits. There are also potential, potential claims in bankruptcies. So this settlement, <clears throat> the condition of it is uh, contingent on how many municipalities join in by the end of this year. Uh, the state is part of it. The state has agreed uh, to share settlement proceeds with cities at a 50-50 rate. We don't know that exact number yet, uh, but it will be over a period of time and it clearly is going to be in the millions. Um, <clears throat> we have registered as required by the uh, master of the uh, class action lawsuits. Uh, so we're, we're primed to be part of the uh, group that receives money. And so if you approve these resolutions tonight, uh, we will file um, that we will participate in the settlement and be part of the joint agreement with the state of Michigan. Mr. Vice President, is that? That is, yes. Very good. Thank you, Mr. City Attorney. We'll need a motion, Mr. Vice President, for item 21. Sure, item 21. Uh, so this is a resolution that deals with state, local government, inter, sorry, intrastate agreement concerning allocation of settlement uh, proceeds and the national opiates litigation. I would move the resolution. It's a proper motion. Is there further discussion? Just to say thank you to the Office of the City Attorney for uh, making sure we were part of this. Thank you. And uh, with that, I would ask for those in favor to please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. Motion carries. Mr. Vice President. Yep. Right. And so number 22 is the participation resolution. I would move the resolution. That's a proper motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, please say nay. Motion carries. Uh, it's the Adam Hussein show tonight. Mr. Vice President. Sure. So this um, has been obviously much discussed and, and was, you know, the, I think the topic of most of the public comment. Um, in any event, this is Act 1, 2020. Uh, this is vacation of both uh, Jerome Street and Home Street right of way. Uh, essentially what we're doing is um, vacating Jerome Street from Pennsylvania to North Holmes and then we're doing, uh, I'm sorry, we're doing a vacation of Holmes from Jerome Street to Michigan Avenue. Um, in any event, if it seems like we've done this before, we have. So um, the original uh, request went uh, to the planning board way back in the summer of 2020. We approved it uh, later on in the summer of 2020, but there were a number of conditions um, that had to be met for us to actually vacate those streets that had to happen within a six month period of time, I think from that August date uh, that we had actually approved. Um, those conditions had not been met. Um, Sparrow, um, ready to move on some development, uh, re-engaged. Uh, and to the, um, uh, I think, credit of our development and planning chair, um, they were asked to really follow the procedure with some measure of fidelity. Uh, and so they were asked to essentially take their request back to the planning board. The planning board did consider this um, at last Tuesday's meeting. Um, they approved unanimously. They did want um, us, or they recommended, I should say, that we include a number of provisions, um, or I should say conditions, uh, within the resolution that we're taking a look at tonight. Most of them dealt with um, green infrastructure, working trees, the addition of um, a road divider um, at, the, at the end of uh, Jerome Street, maintaining that in, uh, in perpetuity, and then also noise levels um, with regards to some of their infrastructure on site. Our city attorney um, did discussed as part of our committee of the whole meeting um, that some of those things do not comport with state statute and there are not things that necessarily we can include in the resolution. Um, so Councilwoman Wood um, had the idea that we, uh, and that's obviously the subject of tonight's late item, um, that we actually um, consider a resolution, uh, kind of a companion resolution, but something that is not necessarily legally binding, uh, that the, uh, uh, the Sparrow actually sits down with the neighborhood within 60 days um, to consider uh, their concerns uh, and maybe some remedies. I would also suggest that uh, maybe our ward representative and that large representative try to participate uh, in that meeting as well. Uh, but with that being said, um, I would 
move act one 2020 that's a proper motion any further discussion seeing none all those in favor please say aye aye, aye. all those opposed please say nay mr vice president Yes, so this is number 24, exemption of city charter provision 6401 to extend multi-year contracts for the positions of police and fire chief. You may uh, remember about a handful of years ago, I think it was 2016, uh, the charter was amended to establish certain limitations um, on employment contracts with at-will employees, and that, of course, includes departmental directors. Uh, and one of those things is that um, we, we now limit contracts uh, for departmental directors to one year. There is a caveat in there um, that the mayor uh, can recommend to this body kind of a, a circumvention of sorts um, and that we can actually approve that. Um, it has been determined that both um, the police chief position and the fire uh, pl police chief, I'm sorry, fire chief position um, that we would be um, more competitive essentially uh, in securing um, candidates. We have uh, engaged in a national search for a police chief, um, are engaged uh, in the middle of a national search now uh, for a fire chief um, and, and taking a look at some, you know, some security for that, the individual that's taking that position uh, has been determined that um, a, you know, a contract extending one year would be beneficial. Um, it was, there, there was quite a bit of conversation today uh, about you know, maybe a limitation to that. And so what we did was we actually amended the resolution as part of our Committee of the Whole um, to allow for the mayor uh, to enter into a, an agreement up to three years, or I should say up to, of, of up to three years. I think one of the things we didn't discuss enough probably um, in the meeting is what this means for the rank and file within those departments as well. There's been so much transiency, so much turbulence within those positions. Um, and I know that both um, you know, our police officers and our firefighters really want a chief that is their chief that they can uh, come to rely, rely on. And I think um, this will provide some measure of security for them as well. Uh, so with that being said, um, I would move the exemption of the city charter provision 6401 to extend multi-year contracts for the open positions of police chief and fire chief. Thank you. Uh, there's a proper motion. All those, is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. Aye. Motion carries seven to one. Uh, next item 25, printing social districts. Mr. Vice President. Yeah, so we have um, Sidecar Slider Bar, and this is on Michigan Avenue, and we also have the Creole Burger Bar in Southern Kitchen, um, which is in Old Town, uh, and they have both um, requested approval as essentially qualified entities that may apply for a social district permit uh, with the Michigan Liquor Control Commission. We had some uh, discussion today about what this means. This is not necessarily an expansion of boundaries with regards to the social districts uh, that we have uh, that we had approved prior, uh, earlier in the year, I think it was at the end of summer, but rather this just allows for these entities uh, to actually apply uh, for, these, for these liquor licenses within those districts. So with that being said, um, I would move item number 25 pertaining to social districts. That is a proper motion. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. Motion carries. Next item is actually item 14. Uh, which is setting the public hearing regarding SLU 21-2021, Councilmember Spitzley. Um, I think that's oh, Councilmember Garza, but I know that Councilmember Wood wanted to speak to it, so we'll let Councilmember Garza take a, take a stab at it. Thank you, Council President. I know that Carol, Councilwoman Wood wanted to speak on this. Is this number 14 we're on? Mm -hmm. okay. Number 14, yes, sir. Okay, so, so what this is, um, special land use, uh, 611 North Butler Boulevard, parcel 33-01-01-17226182. It's special land use. They would like to uh, get a spe special land use permit to uh, install a parking lot there adjacent to the residential area that is to the south of them. And uh, I know that, uh, what was it, uh, Susan Stackwick did not uh, um, recommend this. Uh, the special land use permit, but I know Councilwoman Wood wanted to speak on this, so I will turn it over to her. Councilmember Wood. Uh, thank you, uh, President Spadafore and Councilmember Garza. Um, this particular um, property, um, this neighborhood does not support this rezoning uh, of this. Um, where this is located is just off of the corner of Saginaw and Butler. The corner is a detail shop. 
right behind the detail shop is a parking lot that goes almost the length of Saginaw to what had been a uh, laundromat um, many years ago and before that it was a grocery store. Um, so there is parking behind the establishment that is now asking to create a, uh, take a green space and create another paved um, parking lot. Also across the street from the, the, that entity is another business that has closed that um, there is the possibility of entering into an agreement with that owner for additional parking. Um, the, the idea of creating a parking lot next to a parking lot is ludicrous. The other is the fact that it has um, been an issue uh, in this neighborhood for several years of taking green space and turning it into um, parking lots. So um, having said that, I realized that a request to have um, a, rezon a rezoning or a special land use requires a public hearing. I will support the fact that we're going to call a public hearing, but I do want the council members to understand that this is not supported by the neighborhood and they will be addressing this at the public hearing on um, January 10th. Thank you. And I don't believe I heard a motion, but can I count a motion from Councilmember oh, Garza yes. on this one? Thank With you. that, I move the resolution. Thank you. There is a proper motion. Uh, any further discussion on this item? My Vice President Hussein. Yeah, just very quickly, I wanted to, uh, we did talk about Susan Statuick and the fact that she recommended denial. Um, but what we didn't talk about was the fact that there were several members of the planning board. This did, I think, I think this was approved four to three in terms of the recommendation to this body. Uh, but the three individuals actually um, referenced the, the, um, the adverse, the potential adverse impact on the neighborhood of the South, um, as well as uh, some of the opposition that was coming in from the neighborhood. Uh, so I wanted to uh, just kind of thank those planning board members for um, listening to uh, and paying attention to the input provided. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, I'll Council Member Jackson. Um, just for Councilwoman Wood, just uh, curious on the scope of your discussions with the neighborhood, just how, I mean, I know you're close in proximity to there as well. Yes. I, I, you know, I am in, I live on Lapeer Street, so it's just right around the corner um, from, from this area. Uh, the Genesee Neighborhood um, Association is the one that um, is, um, uh, the within those boundaries and, and um, their feeling about, again, having additional um, parking when there is absolutely ways that they can, you know, mediate um, with other property owners to have the parking that they need. And I, I just, is it, was it like informal conversations or at one of the meetings? I. I can't hear you. Was it on. informal conversations or at one of the meetings that you guys discussed it? This has been, um, because of, of COVID not being able to use the church, there's not been a formal meeting. But what they did was get in touch with the neighbors in around there and um, the ones that regularly attend the meetings and ask them their opinion on it. And that was the resounding um, remarks um, was the fact that they did not support it. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Schitzi. Thank you, Mr. President, and, and I apologize that I don't know this. Um, do, do they own the green space? They own that that spot there. That was current. That was owned by the land bank. So whether the contingency on this is the fact that you know they get the um, special land use and then they'll buy the property. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. I'm just that, looking at it from Google Maps. It just seems odd that they want to expand back into a neighborhood when they when do they have got, all this Yeah, parking, as you so. can see from the picture, yeah. they've got a parking lot right behind yeah. them. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, please say nay. Motion carries. The next item is item number 26, and being spoken to that would be Councilmember Spitzley regarding the establishment of the Red Cedar redevelopment. I'm sorry, same meeting. That's okay. Uh, um, 
Thank you, uh, Council President Spadafore. Uh, so, so right here, establishment of the Red Cedar Redevelopment Project area. So this is the area uh, within East Michigan Avenue to the north and West Brody Road to the east, Kalamazoo Street and Red Cedar River to the south, and South Clipper Street to the west within the corporate boundaries of the city of Lansing. Now, in 2006, in an effort to promote economic development in qualifying communities, the Michigan Legislature passed Act 501 of the Public Act of 2006, being Section 521A of the Michigan Liquor uh, Control Code of 1998. Uh, through those provisions of Public Act 501 of 2006, as amended Act, the Michigan Liquor Control Commission may issue new public on-premise liquor licenses in addition to quota licenses in order to allow cities to enhance quality of life for the residents. So this, this liquor license would stay with the property. It's not uh, transferable, correct? So, and so what they're looking at doing is, and they have to also show good faith that they look for a license to try to purchase one. Yes. So they're requesting to get this uh, uh, established of a Red Sea Marine Development project area and hope that it will get approved for that area, I guess. I, I, don't, I don't entirely understand it all, so. It's it's a as far as I understand the project the redevelopment project areas are an economic development tool that creates an overlay district essentially probably not the right term for anyone in zoning listening but essentially as a district where certain uh, economic development incentives are available including the issuance of special liquor licenses and we've got two of those on the agenda today. Okay, Mr. so Vice with President. that I would move the resolution. That is a proper motion, and I see Mr. Vice President. Hussein has there's a there's a motion we have Chris Klein from leap uh, in the audience I promised him as part of our, of our development and planning meeting um, that folks would want some clarification and they might have a couple quick questions so I'm, I'm hoping that we can bring him up really quickly um, this is uh, in terms of the establishment of a redevelopment project area this is new at least for me I, th I think it's new for maybe even councilwoman wood um, in that I don't know that we've ever approved one of these um, but they you know as um, council president uh, Spatafor laid it out. Um, it is um, an attractive tool um, to help lure some investment, uh, but also liquor licenses of the quota variety are very competitive. Um, and so this is one of the tools that we can uh, use to help uh, different entities um, actually set up shop, um, secure uh, a, a liquor license. Um, and so Chris, if you could just kind of explain just a little bit greater detail, uh, we'd appreciate it. Yeah, um, can you hear me all right? Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, excellent. So you, you did a great job explaining it. Um, that's essentially it. Uh, the, you'll see there's two different kinds of licenses. Um, one was uh, part of the consent agenda, and I think the other one's being referred. But um, there's the, the development district and redevelopment area liquor licenses. Uh, and these are special licenses provided by the Michigan Liquor Control Commission under statute uh, when uh, the market is difficult for uh, quota li liquor licenses. Uh, and so as Councilmember Garza had stated, uh, these are non-transferable licenses. Uh, they are fixed to the property and to the applicant. Uh, any change in that would require um, uh, a new application within the area. So the development district, and I know I'm probably confusing the two right now for you, but I just wanted to make sure that it's understood there's like the two different kinds. Uh, so the development district uh, licenses are for established districts, uh, principal shopping districts, uh, uh, corridor improvement authorities, uh, TIFAs, uh, districts like that. And then uh, the redevelopment area is for um, locations outside of those districts. And so it, it can be defined and approved by uh, the, the uh, by council to establish those and allow for folks to apply for those. Um, there are thresholds that are needed for investment uh, for each of those license types, uh, which this applicant meets and the project meets. Um, and so it's, again, it's just another way of uh, allowing them to secure a liquor license and, and uh, move forward with their, their business. Thank you. Councilmember Wood. Just a couple questions, Chris. Um, when you say non-transferable, that it goes with the property, does, that doesn't mean that they can't change entities that are in the location, does it? So they can change entities, but it would require an application back through uh, li the Liquor Control Commission. Okay. Um, and so it, it would kind of spark the whole process over again. What they wouldn't have to do at that point is requalify um, for the investment, uh, the thresholds that they need to meet uh, in order to get the license, but they would still have to go through the same, the same process. 
Okay. And then um, how, because you're creating um, a project area, how many are allowed in the project area? So uh, for the redevelopment liquor license and the redevelopment project area, um, it depends on the amount of investment. So the, as defined in the area that's before you is the Red Cedar, uh, essentially the Red Cedar development. Right. Uh, so several hundred million dollar uh, development. Right. So for every $50 million and greater part thereof, there's some legal language in that. So $50 million for the first, and I believe it's 25 million or more uh, for every additional. So there could potentially be several licenses um, allowed to be issued under that, that area. Now, it would still have to meet all the uh, necessary qualifications under the, the normal MLCC process, and they'd have to bring those before you as well. Um, I know there's a potential for other businesses within that development to potentially seek uh, these liquor licenses. Uh, they're not before you right now. We just have the one uh, for hooked community. Uh, so there is a potential for additional licenses in the area. All right. Those answer my questions. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. Motion carries. Next item is item number 16. Uh, it's the redevelopment area liquor license for Hooked Community at 3124 East Michigan Avenue, Suite F. Um, that came out of the Committee on Operations today. Um, I've chaired that meeting, so I'll pass the gavel to our Vice President and just reiterate. Uh, this was going to be on the consent agenda, but because we hadn't yet established the district, we needed to do that first. So this is for the um, Hooked Community. It is a bookstore. Um, let me... Finally, hold on, let me pull it up. I wasn't quite ready. We we're moving too fast. <laughs> it's a uh, traditional bookstore and cafe with a, a, a traditional an inventory, a select inventory of books and variety of genres and subjects. Also with the potential of serving uh, wine and other alcoholic beverages. Um, it is uh, in the early stages, but looking promising. And uh, I actually read about it a few weeks ago in the paper and was pleased to find it was coming to Lansing. So happy to move the resolution. There is a motion on the floor for further discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. Passes. Thank you, Chris. Next item is uh, number 27, Mr. Vice President. Sure, so there are two projects that we're looking to issue bonds for. Uh, the one, uh, the first, I'm sorry, is a two-year CSO project or combined sewer overflow project. And this is at the eastern edge of Colonial Village. And then there's an additional project that's required by uh, the ASO. Alec didn't go into great detail um, with regard to that earlier committee of the whole. Uh, but in any event, uh, what this resolution would do is authorize the issuance of uh, bonds in order to pay for the improvements that are part of that project. Um, just, you know, for the public, the state did order uh, some years ago that the city uh, worked to abate raw sewage overflows from its sewage collection system. Uh, and so what we did was we actually came up with a wet weather uh, program plan um, in conjunction with um, some, some guidance from the state. Uh, and we have been working to execute the provisions of that uh, plan for some time now. Uh, so with that being said, I would move uh, the issuance of sewage disposal system revenue bonds. That is a proper motion. Is there any further discussion on this item? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. Motion carries. Next item, Mr. Vice President. Sure. So I don't think I have to remove this, correct? That's correct. All right. Uh, but this does pertain to an amendment to Rule uh, 20 of our own um, rules, and it, it deals with the adoption of ordinances and specifically the manner of introduction in the form of the ordinance uh, we are changing language in lines one through four. Uh, so when amending an existing ordinance, amendments that deal with changes um, will no longer be in capital letting, lettering, sorry, but rather they will be bolded. Again, we, because of Council Rule 41, actually um, made the motion at our prior meeting, and so it is up for consideration tonight. Thank you. Um, so with the motion before us, any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. Motion carries. Next item is a show cause hearing for uh, coming from uh, Councilmember Garza. Thank you, Council President. 
So this is setting the show cause hearing in consideration of orders to make safe or demolish the owners of property located at 4108 Deerfield Avenue, legally described as lot 118 of Pleasant Subdivision number one. The code compliance officer red tagged the said structure on April 10th, 2018. On March 25th, April 22nd, May 27th, and July 22nd of 21, the Lansing Demolition Board held a meeting to consider, or meetings to consider, uh, and make recommendation on whether to declare the structure a dangerous building, and ordered the property owner to make safe or demolish the structure by August of 2021. So the Code Compliance Office has determined that compliance uh, with the order of the Lansing Demolition Hearing Board office, officer has not occurred. I don't have the uh, the property value. The SEV value is at 29,400, and from my understanding from the the uh, D Development and Planning Committee that they have multiple permits pulled but have not taken any action on it. And it sounds like uh, some of the uh, owners of these permits have uh, requested to pull them back because the owner was trying to do work on their own. So with that, I would move the resolution. There's a proper motion. Is there any discussion on this item? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. We do have the late item, Mr. President. That's right, Mr. Vice President, or um, Council Member Wood. Uh, thank you, President Spadafore. Uh, the item that we have before us, um, as was discussed by uh, Vice President Hussein, um, during our discussion about um, the vacation of the property for Sparrow, uh, we did hear the neighbors' concerns about um, issues that they were dealing with. So what was decided in Committee of a Whole was to do a resolution encouraging the hospital and the neighborhood uh, associations um, in the next 60 days to sit down and have a discussion about those issues. And um, then after they've had that um, discussion to bring it um, back to the Committee of Development and Planning uh, with a report on how they're working through those issues. So with that, I would move um, this resolution. This is a proper motion. Is there further discussion on this item? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. And thank you, Lisa, for quick work on that. And we are two ordinance for introduction and setting in public hearings. We have the introduction of an ordinance. Council member Spitzley introduced an ordinance of the city of Lansing, Michigan to amend the Lansing codified ordinances by amending chapter 1218, sections 1218.01 through 1218.99 to conform to the requirements of MCL 324.9101 at SEC, the Soil Erosion and Sedimentation Control Act and applicable state regulations. The ordinance was read a first time by its title and referred to the Committee on Development and Planning. Councilmember Spitzley. Oh, I'm sorry, Councilmember Garza. Thank you, Council President. And so, so my understanding is this is to conform the requirements with the state of Michigan, not entirely word by word, but to conform with the state of Michigan. So with that, I would uh, set the uh, ordinance for in introduction. Thank you very much. That's a proper motion. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, please say nay. Motion carries. Okay, we have the introduction of an ordinance. Council member Hussein introduced an ordinance of the city of Lansing, Michigan to amend chapter 890 of the Lansing codified ordinances by amending section 890.01 to reform guidelines for poverty exemptions for real property and to include income and assets of all owners as criteria for eligibility and modify the percentage of relief granted during each year of exemption consistent with state law. The ordinance is read a first time by its title and referred to the committee of the whole. Mr. Vice President. Okay, and I said just about all of it. Um, so we, what we're looking to do is set a public hearing for January 10th at 7 p.m. Uh, and much like uh, the uh, foregoing ordinance, uh, this is to comport with state law. Thank you. Sorry, uh, so with that being said, I would move the public hearing. Thank you, there's a proper motion. All those, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, please say nay. Motion carries. Okay, we are to speaker registration for public comment on city government related matters. That's the yellow sheet in the back. If you wish to address city council, please uh, complete one of those in the next two minutes and uh, hand it to Ross, our faithful intern, intern in the back. back. And in the meantime, we are to reports of city officers, boards, and commissions. Mr. Vice President. 
Sure. I move that item, all items be considered as read in full and appropriate referrals be made by you. That is a proper motion. Uh, is there any, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. We have items from the clerk, minutes of boards and commissions. Place on file. And a liquor license for Q5 distillery. Committee of the whole. And items from the mayor, uh, social district amendment. Place on file. Uh, workers' compensation settlement. Ways and means. Uh, M uh, Michigan National Resources Trust Fund grant. Ways, ways and means. Uh, development liquor license for RBM properties. Committee of the whole. Um, setting a public hearing as well as adopting SLU 2 of 2021. Development planning. Uh, second Amendment to the 425 Agreement with Delta Township. Place on file. Uh, Renaissance Zone Altum Cells. Place, place on file. Uh, setting a public hearing for the IFT at 8100 Davis Highway. Place on file. Uh, appointment of Holly Seabury to the Elected Officers Compensation Commission. Committee of the Whole. And the Industrial Facilities Exemption Certificate Approval for Altum Cells at 8100 Davis Highway. Uh, holding that on the floor for City Council. And uh, we have um, notices from the Liquor Control Commission, one uh, for Lansing Hotel Endeavors, LLC. City Operations. And one for Ellie and O Mansion, LLC. City Operations. And we have a claim appeal for Todd Dowrick for $490 in trash violations on Clear Street. The Committee of the Whole. Uh, we are to remarks by council members. Any members wishing to make remarks this evening? Just a reminder, folks, I've said it a couple times, but uh, next week, 4.30 uh, on the 20th in Chambers is the special meeting for the IFT. I also, this is my last official meeting chairing as president. I wanted to thank you all for two very, very interesting years. I appreciate you all being there, supporting um, our efforts to keep the city safe, to perform city government operations during a pandemic, and uh, have a little fun along the way. I hope it hasn't been too bad for you all on the other end of my gavel. So thank you very much. Mr. Mayor. All right. Okay, we are to public comment on city government related matters. We have uh, Jody Washington followed by Ross Michaels. Ms. Washington, I'm sure you know the drill. Three minutes. I do, right. thank you so much. <laughs> Jody Washington, Lansing, Michigan. This is really serious to me. Over a year ago, Andy, I asked you to put together a group of people that have boots on the ground that would that work with our chronically homeless people. We know them, we work with them daily. I ask that it not be the same people from the same agencies doing the same thing for years. What was put together was the same people from the same agencies doing the same thing, and we got the same results, nothing. <laughs> Excuse me. Less than a year ago, every person in the back 40 was sheltered and or housed. Now, all those people have been cycled through the system, and they are back at the back 40. Um, They've lost their housing. It's not enough to just put people in an apartment. We have enough low-income housing for every one of these folks. <clears throat> it's a matter of getting them in and keeping them in. They need the tools to sustain their housing. So now Holy Cross will no longer have housing vouchers. They've lost HARA. The people are being let go, and they're only going to do shelter and hotel programming, which by the way, Roadway Inn says they are over $5,000 in debt to them for hotel services they've provided. Many of our homeless, <coughs> excuse me, suffer from trauma and mental health issues. Over two years ago, I asked you to put together a mental health task force with visionaries that could possibly implement new ideas to help our mental health crisis again as a group of academics, the same people doing the same thing, two years later, nothing. We need to demand long-term mental health beds and rehabilitation beds right here in Lansing. Andy, people are dying. Last year, we lost over 20 of our homeless people. Now, if these were children, people would be up in arms. These are homeless people. They're invisible, I get it, but I love them. 
It is more than time that we begin to show urgency. We no longer have the luxury of doing business as usual. We've lost two people in the last few weeks. Nobody hears about these people. They're invisible and forgotten. We must show urgency with code compliance. We have to bring our multifamily units up to a living code. We can't just keep building more. We have plenty, let's fix it. <laughs> we must have urgency with economic development. Without it, we will be stuck in this muck forever. We must have urgency in providing superior academics in this city. Our children are being left behind. We must have an urgency with regionalism. <laughs> it is no longer acceptable for regionalism to only be the money-making efforts. They need to help us with low-income housing and affordable housing and services for our homeless. We warned you. We asked you for help. Thank you. We were patient Ms. and Washington. we were ignored. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. And our final speaker tonight, uh, our final speaker of the year for public comment on city government related matters is Ross Michaels. Okay. Hey, Michael. What an honor. Um, first off, I would like to thank Chris Swope and Brian Jackson for this opportunity. Uh, I have learned so much from this internship. Uh, I cannot describe how nervous I was my first day, considering I did not realize this building was right across from the Capitol. Uh, <laughs> uh, hopefully one day I can look at this building from the Capitol and say that's where I got my start. Uh, finally, I would like most importantly, I would like to thank the clerk's office as a whole uh, for running and uh, making sure elections run smoothly, ensuring that uh, uh, all residents of Lansing have a voice despite these no uh, noisy times. Uh, I would like to thank the council for uh, being understanding for any time I've accidentally screwed up and uh, being so warm. <laughs> And uh, I would like to thank Lansing for all the opportunities they, uh, the city has given me for the last year or so. Thank you. Thank you. With that, the, uh, the regular business of the Lansing City Council for 2021 is at, at an end, and I adjourn the meeting at 8.13 p.m.